FIFO vs. LIFO Inventory Cost Problem 3 Lime Company purchased 400 units for $20 each on January 31st. It purchased 200 units for $30 each on February 28th. It sold a total of 260 units for $90 each from March 1st through December 31st. If the company uses the last in first out inventory costing method, calculate the cost of ending inventory on December 31st. Assume that the company uses a perpetual inventory system. FIFO vs. LIFO, let's have some fun. Remember, first thing to do, see what the question is asking. The question is asking for the cost of ending inventory at the end of the year on December 31st. Next, which method applies? LIFO, FIFO, weighted average? We're told the company uses LIFO, last in, first out inventory costing. So let's write that down. We're applying LIFO. If you apply the wrong method, if you applied FIFO here, you get the wrong answer. We're also trying to determine the ending inventory. We could be asked about the cost of goods sold. We're asked about ending inventory. Next, what do we do? Take a second, stop the video and think. Okay, what do we do next? We put chronologically in order the layers. The question might give this chronologically, it might not. I give it to you chronologically. We're told on January 31st, which is our first layer. So January 31st, the company, Lime Company, purchased 400 units at $20 each, at $20 each, which that equals $8,000 total. I'm just putting in total amounts. You don't have to do the totals. Actually, let's let's erase it. I, I don't like to do the totals just because, again, you don't need them. We don't need the totals. We just need the 400 at $20. That's, that's the important part. Okay, the next layer. We're told the company purchased on February 28th 200 units. So February 28th, layer 2, 200 units at $30 each. That's the next layer. All right. So those are our purchases. You can put that over here, purchases. Company owned. These, or company has these items. Now, one thing to understand, in this question, we're going to have some sales. It's sold. Those sales took place from between March 1st and December 31st. So during the months of January and February, no sales keeps the question simple. Now, if you did have sales during that time period, you it would make things a little bit more challenging, but the same ideas apply. Same ideas apply. I keep things simple so you can understand the, the general idea and you can apply it to even more complex situations. All right. It sold a total of 260 units at $90 each. Do we care about the price it was sold for? No, that is the revenue. We care about the cost of items. We care about the $20. We care about the $30. We care about those amounts, the cost, the historic, historic cost principle in accounting, what you actually acquire it for. Okay. So we sell. We sell 260 units at $90 each. $90 each. Again, we don't care about the $90. We're using LIFO. LIFO is last in, first out, also known as FISH. First in, still here. So last in, first out goes to determining the cost of goods sold. And for ending inventory, what's left, first in is still here. So basically, we go in reverse chronological order. We start at the bottom and go up. We take those 260 units, and they first come from the bottom. Do we have enough in the, se in the second layer? to cover the 260. No. We take all 200 units and we've just eliminated those units. They've now been used. So we take all 200 at $30. Next. We need 60 units cuz still we still need 60 units from the first layer because that's the only layer left and we've already eliminated the first the second sorry the second layer. We've already eliminated the second layer and now we're going up, right? You start from the bottom and go up. We need 60 from the first. How did I calculate 60? Well, we're selling 260 total. That's the 260. We have 200 in the first layer. There's 60 left to be sold. So we're going to have 60 at 20, $20. So we're going in reverse chronological order. Reverse chronological order. So those are the cost of goods sold. If you're calculating cost of goods sold, you would um, multiply 200 times 30 and 60 times 20. You would get those numbers, add them up, 
and that would give you cost of goods sold. But this question, we're asked about ending inventory. So if we used 60 of layer one, what's left? Well, layer two is completely gone. So layer one's all left and we have specifically 400 minus 60. We have 340 units left. So 340 units times at $20, what does that equal? $6,800, $6,800. So our ending inventory is $6,800. That is the answer. $6,800 is the ending inventory in this, in this respective question. Now we did determine how to calculate cost of goods sold. I didn't do that because, again, it's not asking for that, but I showed you how you could calculate it. One other thing I wanna notice, prices here are rising. So price is rising, and again, when you go through all the questions, you can apply your LIFO versus FIFO when prices rise and you can flip it for the when prices decline because or a fall because it's going to be the contra, the inverse of, of the rising. So that's really everything. We've gone through, we calculated the ending inventory, what's left on the books of inventory, and the balance sheet, $6,800.